law was given to Moses, but grace and mercy came to Jesus. So listen to the word of Jesus. When Jesus went to the temple, he saw these religious people selling their animals at the temple. Jesus got mad. That's the only part when you hear when Jesus got mad. Came and flipped up the table. He told him to get away from here. And then I want to read it to you. He said, Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove up all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changer and the seat of those who sold those. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called. Not the house of sinner. This is Jesus speaking. Not the house where you can come and show your talents. Not the house where you come in here and look good for other people. Not the house that you will come and talk behind other people's back. Not the house that you will come here and do whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do. But Jesus said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. The house of prayer. You see, every prophet in the Old Testament had this thing called a prayer life. Every prophet has a background of prayer life. Do you have a prayer life? I tell you what, prayer changed me. It doesn't change God. It changed you. When you pray like Elijah prayed, and the heaven opened, and the heaven was shut, that's the kind of prayer I want. But see, I teach myself how to speak to God. I want to know how to speak to God. Jesus said, my house shall be called the house of prayer for all nations. Hallelujah. And listen to this. Verse 14. Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. The church was for the blind man and the lame man. See, you not you can't see. I couldn't see. Jesus opened up my eyes. I couldn't walk. But he heals me. Now I can walk. Now I can see. Now I can speak. I can hear. I can sing. Knowing I'm not a good singer, but I still sing. Because my heart is in the right place. Hallelujah. But, I, but what I say is, every Sunday morning, I want to brag about Pastor Patrick. Every Sunday morning, we do what we do when a pastor, pastor will come and say, are you guys ready for prayer? You know how much I feel I love prayer. And his son, AJ, will be here next to us. And this little child loves to pray. And it breaks my heart. And I was like, oh my gosh, I, I felt it. And, and I looked at my only daughter. And I said, I want my daughter. I'm going to do this. I'm going to bring her to, the, to where we can. I want her to pray. I want my daughter to know how to pray. Every believer was commanded by Jesus to learn how to pray. Don't you know that Luke 11, that's the only thing that the disciple asked for Jesus to teach them. Teach them how to pray. They didn't tell them, teach me how to walk on water. They didn't say, teach me how to heal the sick. They didn't say, teach me how to multiply the bread and feed the people. They didn't say nothing but one thing. Teach us, the disciples. Teach us, Jesus. We want to know how to speak to you. Hallelujah. And then John did a great job teaching them. Now, I want to ask you something. See, y'all look down about prayer. Nothing will happen until you pray. I learned how to pray by reading the word, listening to Pastor Patrick, Pastor Willie, the testimony of the brothers and sisters here. And I learned how to pray. I learned how to pray for those. Let me tell you what happened in the book of Acts. When Paul and Sila were in prison because they cast out the spirit was in this lady that could tell the future. They went in the jail. 
And let me tell you what happened. They were in prison. The Bible says they were singing hymns. They were praying. They were worshiping. And then the prisoner, I love this verse. The Bible said the prisoner was paying attention. They were listening to him. Oh, Mr. Hart. They were listening to him and said, wow, this is, this, I love this worshiping thing. They were praying. I'm going to read it to you. Is... Acts 16, verse 25. But at midnight, Paul and Sila were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoner was listening to them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake. So that the foundation of the prison was shaken. Immediately, all the door was open. And everybody was inside. The chains were loose. Let me tell you something. If you have a problem with lust, prayer can break the foundation of that. If you have a problem with the drinking and smoking once or once a time, I'm telling you, prayer it will break the foundation. See, God wants to break that foundation. The stronghold, whatever that thing that holds you back. God wants to shake it. <clears throat> and when God shake it, they say they were free. All the prisoners were free. He, he wanted two persons were worship and pray, and then the rest of the prisoners <laughs> were free. Because why? Because they were praying. They prayed. And in that occasion when Peter was in prison. And the Bible says the church offered the what? The prayer for Peter. The church would got together and they prayed for Peter for preaching the gospel. He got locked up for it. And the Bible says when the angel came that night, Peter was sleeping. Like knocked out. See, I love that because... When you are right with God, you can sleep through the night no matter what's going on. Here's Peter in prison, but he is knocked out. He said, the Bible said he was sleep so good that the angel has to poke him up. Get up! Get up! Put your shoes on and get out of here. But the man was sleeping so good. Because when you are right with God, you can sleep through the night. Some of you here can't sleep. Your mind is wondering. Oh, how I'm going to pay my bills. Oh, my wife. I had to straighten my wife up. Oh, my husband. Oh, my kids. I had to straighten one out. The other one acted like a fool. I had to do this and the other one hurt. And all that's all sudden. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But prayer. Bring the peace. That's why I love, I love, I love. <clears throat> When it's time of prayer, Jesus said, my house. What's going on with the church nowadays? The church is filled with people who come here and wants to sing. No prayer life. They want to come to talk about this and this, but no prayer life. Jesus said, pray so you may be count worthy Hallelujah. in the kingdom of God. I receive it. Pray so you might be what? Count worthy. Amen. Every believer knows they have to have a prayer life. It might not answer tomorrow, next year, there, but God will answer your prayer. So I teach myself, I want to learn how to talk to God. God talked to me through the Word, but if I have to speak to God, I have to pray to God. I want to talk to God. And I tell you what, it is an amazing thing. It's a joy in my heart when I knew that I'm talking to the one creator that will supply everything I need. Mm -hmm. Are you a prayer person? I want to say to the young brothers and sisters here, look, your money won't save you. Your car won't save you. Your own family's going to turn their back on you. 